Lesson 34, Honoring God's Servant. In today's lesson, we shall learn about honoring God's servant. Although Jesus was not honored in his hometown, he certainly was very popular in other areas because of his power to heal people. The disciples were sent out as servants of God to preach in the villages. We also will see how King Herod felt pressured to kill John the Baptist, also one of God's servants. In this chapter, Jesus feeds the multitude and walks on the waves of the sea. When Jesus entered his home country and was teaching, the people became offended because they knew his family and relatives and did not think he was anyone so special. Jesus said that a prophet is not without honor except in his home, among his relatives, and his household. People have a hard time to understand how God can take simple and poor people and do great and mighty things. God loves to do this, so we will see the work is from God and not from men. The disciples were sent out to preach in the villages, and Jesus said they should not take money, food, or extra clothes with them, but look to the Lord to provide through those to whom they would preach. He was teaching them to live by faith when serving their God. Realizing that some would not listen to them or provide for them, he said that they should shake the dust off of their feet when leaving a place that did not receive them. This would be a symbolic gesture against them as refusing the kindness of God and they would one day be judged severely for their unwillingness to honor God's servants. How we treat God's servants is a reflection of how we think about God and how we treat God. So we should remember that when we are listening to men preach or offer to help them in practical ways. By God's help, the disciples cast out demons and healed many people. Now we have the story of King Herod, who had a birthday party for himself, and his adulterous wife had a daughter who danced before the king and his guest. Herod was very pleased with her dancing and offered her up to half of his kingdom. She quickly consulted with her mother to see what she should ask for and Herodias, who hated John the Baptist, said she should ask for John the Baptist's head on a platter. Now Herod feared and respected John, and was very sorry about this request, because he did not really want to kill John. However, he did not want to lose face before all of his dinner guests, so he ordered that John be killed and his head brought to the girl. This very sad event seems so unfair and unrighteous. Why did God allow these wicked people to kill a good and innocent man? Well, it might all seem rather tragic to our eyes, but God will have his justice in the end. Far too often people do things to look good in the sight of others, even when they know it is wrong. It may seem good for the immediate circumstances, but know that one day we shall answer to God for all the things which we did. We should always try to build our lives around honoring God and not other people or ourselves. Then we will be careful to stay away from sin. When the disciples returned to Jesus from their preaching campaign, they found it difficult to even eat a meal because of the many people coming and going. Jesus said they should depart to a deserted place, but even there the crowd saw them going and followed them. When Jesus saw the crowds coming to meet him, he was not annoyed, because he had no peace or time to himself, but rather had compassion on the multitude, saying that they were like sheep, which had no shepherd. Jesus taught the crowds many things, and also realizing that the people were hungry, Jesus asked his disciples to feed the huge crowd of thousands of people. The disciples told Jesus even if they had lots of money, they could never feed this large crowd. So Jesus asked how much food they had. They told him they had five loaves and two fish. Then he asked his disciples to have the people sit in groups of hundreds and fifties on the grass. He then blessed and broke the bread and gave to the disciples. Miraculously, the food was multiplied and everyone had enough to eat, 
and even plenty of food was left over. This important miracle is recorded in each of the four Gospels and reminds us that God is our great provider, supplying us food to eat. God made us in such a way that we are dependent on his care to feed us. He, indeed, is the great shepherd of the sheep, looking after all of our needs. After everyone had eaten and Jesus had sent his disciples in a boat to travel across the lake, he himself went into the mountain to pray alone. After tending to the many needs of the day, and now that it was very late, Jesus resorts to prayer so he can be alone with his Father. Perhaps to speak about the death of John or to speak of the next steps he must take in his service to mankind. While men failed to honor Jesus, certainly his Father in heaven found great delight in his Son, for he always did his will and manifested the love and mercy of God to needy humanity. After some time in prayer, Jesus sees his disciples struggling against the wind on the lake, and he goes to them walking on the waves of the sea. Truly everything we witness Jesus doing reveals that he is much more than a mere man or a prophet. He is truly the Son of God, for he can raise the dead to life, feed 5,000 people with a small lunch, and walk on top of the water. The disciples were frightened and thought they were seeing a ghost, but Jesus calms their fears and said it was he himself. After Jesus boarded the boat and they reached the other side of a lake, again many people recognized him and came to him. They brought him many that were sick and laid them in places where they hoped they could just reach and touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched Jesus were healed. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Mark chapter 6 verse 4